Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. Happy Labor Day. You guys don't know it, but this is our third intro to this. <laughs> third. <laughs> Wife over here slipping. Two times already. First time my headphones weren't plugged in, then my mic was, then my Is camera recording? wasn't recording. We are back. We're we didn't back. say anything special anyways. Nah. But we are back. We're ready. We have an episode for you on Labor Day, whereas, listen, we want kudos for that. Yes, please. Because many people are not putting out an episode. Of course not. A lot of them are out of town or on vacation. They're gone. Or just, yeah. not, or just taking the day off. I know, but mm. it's hard because then I have nothing to listen to. It's not well, a day off. I got me. one for you. Joe Rogan and Hulk Hogan. Yeah. That, it's already out. It's like a three hour one. Is it's it a long? long one. Yeah. I love the Joe Rogan ones. It's a long. I know. Me too. That one will. It's a good one. That will tide me over. Okay. Can I listen to that on my. Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've never listened to Joe Rogan really. I'll catch his. I'll catch okay. him with you when you have him on sometimes and I enjoy it but I yeah. don't know why it's not in my rotation for some reason you should have him I'm telling you maybe it's a lot too of... manly sometimes uh, it's Is good it good? information he brings on doctors scientists I like to learn it's I do learn. I like you know what I like about Joe is he is he feel he's like our belief in that he brings on people that he doesn't necessarily agree with yes he doesn't feel <clears throat> like he can only learn from or have <clears throat> people on his show that he 100% aligns with no that's not his style. That's like sheep. It's nice to explore. That's what I like about his. Yeah, me too. He asks a lot of good questions too. He's a very good like interview as well. Yeah. Like when he brings doctors and scientists and. His interviews are not really interviews. It's more like conversational. And that's yes. what I like about it. Yes. It's like they become part of his episode. And sometimes they even talk about other things. It's not just an interview. No, no, no that's not what I mean. He's asked the right questions, which oh, yeah. is good. Yeah, he does. I wonder what he how he preps for episodes. I know. I wonder too, right? Because he has all kinds of different guests. I would love to know what guests. his BTS is. Does he just get like an outline? Does someone do all the work for him? I know, right? What questions to ask? Because some of these guys are super smart, like scientists. You know, the guys, he has a lot of different people on there. Doctors. Yeah. Just different know. opinions. And I like that he's very open with... Uh, his political stance, or certain things he doesn't agree with. I love that. He Even doesn't though go with the it's not, um, he never goes with the narrative. The popular opinion. Nope. He doesn't care. He's not afraid of being canceled. Yep. He don't care. That's I love how that. I feel. They try I'm to not cancel. Not afraid of being canceled. No, they try to in the backfire. Exactly. I don't want to be something I'm not. I want to be me. That's it. Nothing else. I don't want to mm -hmm. downplay myself. I want to sugarcoat or. Let's just say, like me and you, we we talk about that. Let's just say our podcast blew up one day. Somebody wants to buy us out. And they try to change who we are and how we talk. No, it's not going to work. It's not no. authentic. No. I can't change the person who what I am. What was I watching yesterday? Oh, I think it <clears> was, <throat> yeah, it was the Love is Blind reunion from Love is Blind season four. The couples that like they've been married a year now or whatever. And it, the common theme in the, ep the episodes were, it is so nice to find someone that loves you for you. Love is Blind was a show on Netflix where they met without seeing each other. But the couple so far have been really successful coming out of last season. They're all still together. Yeah. But that was the common thing they kept saying. Like, it's so nice to have found someone that loves me for exactly who I am as a person. Because I think that is one of the hardest things is when you always feel when you're with someone, you always feel like you have to change. No, that's not cool. That's not. Then it becomes like not. Too natural. much work. It's not natural. I think it's the same <clears throat> thing with a podcast or whatever. If you're forced to fit in a certain box or whatever, then yeah. the it just loses its authenticity. Yeah, uh, It's the same in relationships. Yeah. I'm sure we could act differently and try to be cool or something we're not or try to be this other persona we're not. I can not be us. like a true health and wellness person, whereas God forbid you guys would ever see me drink a Diet Coke on there because that doesn't go well with an image right? of a healthy yes. lifestyle coach. Yes, I'll be on here stirring up my greens and trying to fit the part. I never have tried to fit the part. No. Never. No. Even when I was a keto, I literally was known, you guys, in the keto community. Okay, I was in the very beginning. I was in the... When it became mainstream, I was one of the main keto influencers yes, out there were. as well. Yep. But one <clears throat> thing that was different about me is I didn't try to fit in the mold of let's let me be a perfect keto person. Right. Because God forbid if someone sees that I actually do eat carbs or that I do things that I shouldn't technically do, I never wanted to do that. 
I never yeah. wanted to fit in that mold. And that's why I always, I never went like full balls to the wall keto influencer. I always used to joke and say, I didn't change my Instagram name. It's not Keto Janine. Right? Someone would like try to call me out. Are you eating carbs on keto? That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I don't like to, that's why I didn't, no. I don't want to fit in the bar. I just want to be me. That's, you can't label the no. diet that I do or nope. how I coach or whatever. It's my style. It's me. It, they, there isn't a name for they it. They probably think we're crazy by the what we eat like on cheat day or meals and people see what we eat sometimes. We'll post McDonald's or pizza. We don't lie, you know? Yeah. But again, we still adhere to our program. That's why we have success. Right. It's our program. It's it. not a name for I don't think there's no. a name for it. It's no. just our philosophies no. and style. Yes. And what we do is we live it and yep. show it. Exactly. We show it exactly as we live it. We don't, don't like hide. water it down no. or, oh, we can't. Have you ever heard me say, babe, don't show that or don't show, make sure I'm not doing this in the background or do, I've never done that exactly. ever. Um, and what do we always see? I'll turn on YouTube and I'll see how people eat and different fitness influencers and trainers. Nothing like the white pancake. To the normal man, they see four eggs over medium running, pancakes, chicken apple sausage, a hash brown. They're probably like, how the, how the hell does he do that? Yeah. Because it's, it's all about knowing your numbers. But it's just about it's the way we do it. And the way, the way we do, we do it. it, it's not the only way. No. I enjoy my food. That's what I love, the way we do it. I enjoy right. what I'm eating. I'm not like... Taking every bite, dreading it. I've done those diets too where they suck. Right. You hate it. My point is that we just, we do things our way. We yes. show how we do it exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you attract people who also want to learn that way. Exactly. Just but balance. Just, but not being, trying to fit in a mold. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Trying to fit in a mold. Like, oh, okay. Now I'm going to be like Miss Fitness USA gym person. So now I'm never, I'm not going to share that I had a horrible workout or I was doing right. this wrong or I learned something new from somebody else, God forbid. Right. And you got to know how to put always also not always put your best foot forward. I don't feel the mood today or this mm -hmm. or that. People don't, they, they try to always on. You're not always on. Sorry. No one's always on 24 mm -hmm. seven. Mm -hmm. Possible. Yeah. Cause I can tell you though, it's easy. It is easy to paint a picture that's not true. Yes. For example. Yes, it is. I could have gained that menopause weight and no one would ever know. No. You know what I mean? Because it's no. not like it's really obvious. Exactly. No one would ever know. I could have experienced that whole thing and I didn't have to tell anybody. I could have said, look, guys, I adhere to my macros and Jay's body boot camp and I didn't have any issues with menopause. I could have said that. But the majority of influences out there right there. They mm -hmm. paint a picture that's not true, but <clears throat> that wasn't my, and if it was my experience, then I would have said it, but that wasn't my experience. No, right? Let me just make sure my picture's straight. <laughs> oh, got me looking episode. back. Anyways, it was a lazy Saturday. I, can, I lie. It's, it, was, it didn't start lazy. No. We walked. We walked. We did a three mile walk. And yes. then I had a, I, did, I went to Orange Theory. You did. Got your butt kicked. Yeah, I got my butt kicked. It was a 2,000 meter um, benchmark row. And I hate rowing. I probably wouldn't have gone to class if I knew. And listen, what got you to Orange Theory yesterday? It was an ugly day, gloomy out, doomy. It was my discipline for sure. Yeah. My mood was not good. I'll be, I'll be honest. No. I, my dad wasn't in a great mood. And it's very triggering for me sometimes. He tri triggered me, if I'm being honest, on Saturday morning. And sometimes when he triggers me, it makes me miss my mom more. Yeah. I don't want to get emotional, but. So, yeah. And then I just went down a rabbit hole with my phone, started looking at pictures. And then yeah. it's just, I feel like I, she just died yesterday. Man, I so know. I went and got my workout done. And yeah. I was supposed to be vlogging and finishing doing all the things. In fact, I was supposed to go to a concert last night. Yes, you were. I had my outfit picked out. I was going to go and then I flaked. And I never flake. No, I'm you don't. not a flaker. No. And you know what? It was funny because I was laying there. Okay, I got to get up and take a shower. Yep. And then I was like, fuck, I got to take you a told shower. Me. And you're all, oh, yeah, you got to get ready. I forgot you were going to that. And I looked at you like, good luck. I'm right here chilling. Yeah. And I, felt I was sorry like, because you. you didn't look like you're in the mood. You weren't feeling good. I just, I had a headache and I just, wasn't feeling my best, you know, no. I just from after my workout and then I just went to the couch and was it, what do we call it? I couch rotted. 
Yes. That I couch. couch yes. I couch rotted all day. And so I texted my cousin and I just was 100% honest. Brutally I'm like, you honest. know what? I'm flaking. I'm just flaking. I'm just not feeling up to it and I'm going to flake. <laughs> What's crazy is no one does that. They're not honest. No, no one's they make honest. Up everything under just the be sun. honest, you guys. Just, hey, say, I'm just sorry. I'm, I don't feel good. I'm not in the mood. I'm flaking. Look, boom. People respect yeah. you more. A lot of times you'll make excuses that sound like fake ass excuses. So people know you're just making excuses. We know. And I hate that. I don't we, yeah. like to be lied to. Don't do it. Just say you're flaking. Not in the mood. Lie. No worries. I don't like. I felt bad. I'm, I'm like, told her I'm so sorry. And she was so like, no, absolutely. I hope you're okay. Do you need anything that isn't like you? So I know, are you okay? Kind of thing. Yeah. So I appreciated that she didn't give me guilt about it. There's nothing worse than when somebody like gives you guilt yeah. about something. I just wasn't feeling in the mood. And every once in a while, I've been very honest about it on here too. I need one of those days. I'm on all the time. Exactly. I have so much going on. And doing so many things. And sometimes I just give in to my sadness. And I don't, I let myself wallow in it. I'll look at pictures and think of memories, listen to songs. Watch old movies. Started sending pictures to my brother. And and then he started, he was at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. And even he said, I parked in the back parking lot. Because that's what we used to do when we were kids. And, and then I started thinking about that. I'm like, mom would sit in the van and wait for us to come out for snack breaks. And yeah. I was just all in my feels. Yeah. And that's, it is That's okay. Is. You love your mother. You miss her. That's understandable. Nothing like a mom. Miss mine too. So, yeah. But I feel good today. I feel better today. Yeah. Got a good night's rest? Yes. <laughs> I slept a lot. Too much, according to Mr. Escobar. Too much. Because he gets mad when I sleep in, God forbid. Even though last Sunday he slept in and I didn't give him one ounce of grief about it. I didn't try to say anything. You were like, oh, it's okay. It's Sunday. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is Sunday. Don't worry about it. For me, no. God forbid you give me some grace. It was 7 o'clock. Got to get going. Why? We got we to walk, why? things to do, podcast. But why? Why can't I do. just I want to watch. I want to wake up, watch TV, drink my coffee. Anyways, he doesn't give me the same grace that I give him sometimes. I'll tell you that. Seven's late, man. But why I am an adult who, if I want to sleep in on a day, a Sunday of all things, when you but you're on the couch, I want to watch TV. But you could watch TV. Are you turn it on? I'm not. I never said. Why did you wake me up? No. Yeah, you were sleeping, so I I was trying not. So, but you were worse because of it. I was just waiting and patient. Then you're worse because you woke. There's nothing worse. Let me just tell you guys. I know you agree with me. When you just wake up. Literally, just wake up. Not an ounce of caffeine. You haven't even emptied your bladder, and somebody is like on you. That is the worst. It's one of the worst things you can do to me. Give me ten minutes to get up, go pee, get a little caffeine in me, and then say whatever you want. But give me a few minutes before you bombard me with a million things. All right. I don't think it's hard to. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't bombard you when you just wake up. No. But I'm up earlier than you every day. Last Sunday I was up. You slept in. Huh? Yeah, you last Sunday. In. Not today, though. But you slept in, and did I give you grief about it? No. That's what I'm saying. It does. All right. I'll be more mindful. You guys are hearing it. You are hearing it here. Because you know what? It's not like I planned it. I didn't plan it. Yeah. You can't plan that. Sometimes it just needs to happen, though. Sometimes it's just a catch up. Maybe I had a poor sleep a couple nights before something. You don't know. It's maybe probably was residuals from my down mood yesterday. Yep. So, but I got up this morning. I took a shower. I mean, we, I walked, gave my dad breakfast. He was in a little bit better of a mood. I took a shower, got ready, and I'm here doing the podcast. See? Now we're good to go. Yeah, we are. We're good to go. All right. I want to talk about the hot coffee topic. Guess who lost 55 pounds and is on his, is still on his journey. He is excited and feeling good. I have no idea. Shaq. A lot of people lost weight. Shaq. Oh, good for him. Shaq is on a weight loss journey. He's been on a weight loss journey for yeah, a while. Yeah, he is. He's Because he's not doing anything super fad yeah. or like trying to do, he's just making little lifestyle changes yep. because he... Got over 400 pounds. He's a big dude. 
seven foot one. He was over 400 pounds, but he was in so much pain, he couldn't even walk up the stairs. I bet. That's too much weight. And he's 51. Yeah, he's not. He's not an old man. Shaq's how old? 51. Oh, why? He's a few years older than me. I thought we were like the same age. Got me beat by a few years. Yeah, Mm. he's 51 years old. He admitted Mm. that he's now down to 351 pounds. He wants the number to keep dropping on the scale, and he's setting himself some crazy goals. He could do it. He'd like to get down between 315, 330. He says, I want to have a 12 pack. He just, he's on a Shredsville. You journey. could. It's he just, can. it's just, I keep telling people that men, especially men, they have this fucking thing in their head that I'm this age and that's just the way it is. Dude, anyone could strip off body fat. I'm living proof. I'm almost 49. Mm-hmm. Or somebody told my boy, like Latino men in their 40s yeah. can't get abs. We all have abs, you moron. You got to shed off the body fat to see it. Yeah. <laughs> If you didn't have abdominal muscles, you wouldn't be able to hold yourself up. That's exactly. your core. Everything is with your core. Yes. That's Every, how we hold ourselves. Everything, yes. Speaking of which, but congrats to that to Shaq on yes. that. And he's on his journey and he's making lifestyle changes, which is great. It. But speaking of that, it just made me think of like your core muscles holding you up. Yeah. You met someone in the gym. Yes. That he, we see him go there, you guys. He's got like this brace on his leg. And I think we talked about it at the last episode, but he has a brace on his leg. And I actually saw him getting out of his car and how difficult it is a process to get out of his car. Yeah. It's actually not something wrong with his leg. It's a back brace that's attached to his leg. Yes. Because he said, what did he tell you about his leg? He said it was in a motorcycle accident four years ago. And I thought it was leg. It was actually my back. So if he doesn't wear that brace that connects his leg to his back, his leg will, leg will be like a noodle. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I'm going to actually insert a clip here because you spoke to him in the gym. Yeah. And so you guys can see that. Yeah. I'm here at City Sports, killing a workout with my buddy Mikey. Hey, Mikey, tell him what's your, why do you do this? Tell him what happened to you. It's my only option, man. I've been in a bad motorcycle accident, and it's either this or a wheelchair, so it's this. Yeah, you guys. All you motherfuckers have nothing but excuses. I'm this, I'm that, you're able body. Look at my man. He's in here getting it. Fuck your excuses and let's motherfucking go. You guys saw that clip. That's him. He's how old is he? 35? 35. He looks younger to me. He, yeah. he looks really good for his age. Look yes. how fit he is. He's fit. He's so fit. He probably is, is, is mindful of what he eats. He's not dumb because yeah. he can't, obviously his leg, he's not probably able to push as hard as he'd like. Yeah. He does what of he can. Course. It's just inspiring, though. Yes, exactly. Like, I sometimes sit in the parking lot of the gym not feeling like going in just because I don't feel like going in. It doesn't take me 10 minutes to get out of my car. I don't have to maneuver and do all of these things. Yeah. Can you imagine? He probably looks at other people who are able-bodied, who are complaining that they have to go to the gym and thinks you have no idea. Yeah. And he looks like he's positive, smile, always in a good mood. Yeah, he's got a big smile. You know why? I think that... Happy He's probably alive. happy to be alive. Yeah. That he went through something very traumatic where, who knows? I, I never got deep with him. Maybe he died on the operating table and came back. We don't, I don't know the whole incident. Yeah, we don't know. Obviously, he was mangled up pretty bad. Yeah, of course. Did I he mean, say how long ago it was? Four years ago. Wow. I said, That's just keep crazy. on fighting, man. You yeah. never know. Med- medical advancements are happening all the time. I know. I know. When that Anyways, era. that was inspiring. I love people that i can see in the gym that make me inspired yeah i got another friend that i train with at my academy he trains he does like the crossfit side of it strength and conditioning and he he lost a leg in the war so he has a prosthetic leg and he's there doing crossfit he does strength training oh not crossfit but yeah but he does what he can because he's limited mobility but he still gets it gets after it it that it's just Yeah, just remember when you're getting, when you're in the gym, when you're in the car feeling sorry for yourself, when you have to walk in the gym. You got two legs, two arms. Think I get to work out, not I have to work out. It's a difference. That's a huge mindset shift. Okay, Mm -hmm. moving on to comment corner. The first one comes to us from Shannon Taylor, 8533. She says, I just started listening to the podcast and I love it so far. I have a question for the next episode. I have been struggling with my weight my whole 25 years of life. I've lost weight and gained it back three different times. Recently, during the start of the pandemic, I lost 40-ish pounds in 2020 and 2021 by tracking macros and exercise. 
From spring until now, I've literally gained 60 pounds. So for various reasons, one being losing control over myself, but they are honestly just excuses. I really want to lose it again and keep it off this time. Do you have any tips on that? And any tips for not hating myself for gaining this weight back? Thank you so much. And I greatly appreciate the feedback. Please keep the episodes coming. I loved this because it's so common. It's so common. Yes. Everybody's doing this or does this to some degree. I think it's important to also th- remember yep. everybody does it to some degree. Everybody. All the time. Forever. Including myself. That's why I'm constantly either in maintenance or I'm cutting. And whatever the reason may be, there's always a reason why I pop up five pounds this year, 10, 15 pounds. Because of menopause, sometimes it's because you a gr- death in the family. Sometimes it's a new job. Yeah. Sometimes it's lots of different things. Yeah, problem, personal problems, financial problems. Life's always throwing something at you. So that's why you shouldn't hate yourself because you are literally like everybody else. Yes. The only difference is you let it go a little farther than you should have. Yes. The only difference between you and me is that I try to reel it in sooner. Yes. So that it's less of a mountain to climb. Yes. Facts. That's the lesson that you can get from this. The cool thing is it's totally undoable. You can yes. take it back off. Yes, you can. How many times I've done it? I've done yeah. it. First doubted it with Matt. I got super lean and I yeah. packed some way back exactly. on. Exactly. And I went back to keto. Then I went fitness to keto. professional. Yeah. And I went to keto, shred that off, and then boom, packed that back on again. And then... Pretty much kept it off for the most part and let it yeah. get two back. And then this last time I'm doing macros and I took it off. Now, my advice some. for this not happening again yes. is make sure that the way that you choose to lose this weight this time is a, a sustainable method. Don't rush. Meaning nothing is really going to change when you're in maintenance, only your volume. So everything that you're committing to doing for your weight loss journey should be lifelong commitments. Yes. So no short term. They don't work. Yeah, the reason why cuz my journey has been I've maintained my weight within a range, but I've never gone more now let's say 15 pounds a- after a 100 pound weight loss in 26 almost 27 years. That's pretty impressive. And that's because I enjoy the process. I don't, there's not a huge difference to me between maintenance and cutting. Yeah. And I've gotten only better at it, obviously. Yeah. But you have to love the lifestyle and the process. You do. And the challenge of it too, man. You do. Even tracking macros, learn to love it. Yes. Try to avoid fads or fad diets that sound really sexy and the weight's going to come off really fast. Avoid that. And avoid this mindset because this is really common, especially when you're feeling desperate to lose weight. It's very common to say, okay, I know that I shouldn't do these fad diets. I know I shouldn't do this diet or that diet or extreme calorie restriction for a long time, but I'm just going to do it to get the weight off. And then I'll do what I need to do, what I'm supposed to do. Never works. It Easier doesn't said work. than done. It doesn't work nope. that way. So my biggest advice to you, find a method that you enjoy. Yep. I want you to ask yourself as you are on your journey of losing weight, everything I'm doing right now, am I committed to doing this forever? Is this sustainable for me? I ask myself that too. Every once in a while, I ask myself, okay, have I gotten in over my head committing to walk every day three miles? Is this really sustainable? And I've decided absolutely it's sustainable. Yeah, of course. It's absolutely. It's just, it's not that long. It's an hour of my time. We use it as a catch up time catch up on our day or whatever. You could use it as a podcast time or whatever, but it doesn't matter. My point is I did stop and ask myself, am I adding in something in my weight loss journey that's also going to be sustainable lifelong? The answer is yes. Yep. My workouts, am, do I have a sustainable workout schedule? Absolutely. I don't work out more than an hour and a half a day. Nope. We talked about this the other day. Why does everybody freak the fuck out when you tell them that you go to the gym or work out for one or two hours a day. I say like, two hours. Oh my God. Two hours? That's so extreme. Why doesn't anybody freak out when I said I, I watched all the episodes of Love is Blind yesterday? How many hours of TV time? Five hours probably. No one says, oh my God. Or if you sit and watch two episodes of a show, 
nobody freaks out that you just watched two hours worth of TV, but they freak out that you went to the gym for yeah, two hours. I know. So don't let anyone th- a daily tell me. you something isn't sustainable. Yeah. But that's my biggest advice. Make sure that the way that you lose the weight this time around is a way that you enjoy and that it's something you can do lifelong. Don't do it too fast. Don't panic diet. No, don't panic don't diet. Don't panic diet. That's the worst. Let it come off slow. It'll come off. It'll come off. I'm not panic dieting. Nope. I had a moment when I stepped on the scale and I hadn't seen a yeah, three a on the scale as that second number in many years. I went back to my like fat girl brain like, oh my God, like I want a panic diet. And I'm like, no, yeah. we're not doing that. No. That doesn't work. So it's coming off slow and steady for me and I'm happy with it. What do you always say though? Slow and steady wins the race. Mm-hmm. It's a, Our life is a marathon. Right. It's not a sprint. Anytime we try to like, the, I don't know if it's the same thing, but it's when someone first all, goes all in, I'm going to diet all in. I'm going to go to the gym all yeah, in. They go is. gangbusters. Yeah. They go gangbusters, psh, and then they boom, right. explode within a few weeks. Yeah. Never it fails. Everybody starts a diet, goes gangbusters, like cold turkey thing. They don't even yeah. make it a week. I even this even cut, week. even with my losing menopause weight, I have done it, gotten to this point where I'm at very slowly. <clears> I keep <throat> adding in different tools and buttoning up my cheat days a little bit tighter and at home. slowly. I didn't mm-hmm. step on the scale, panic and go, I'm going to be a thousand percent strict until I get this weight off. No, I just, okay, it is what it is. You Time's going to pass anyway. Let's implement some things. Every week I look at my routine and think, okay, how is it? Do I need to change things up a little more? Maybe I'm going to try bumping up my protein a little bit. And you just tweak as you go, but make sure it's sustainable lifelong. And not only that, you're not in a rush. But there's no set date. That's the thing. You're not Nobody competing for be. a show. That's a problem. People always put these, I got a wedding in 60 days. I'm, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Yeah. That's you know, a panic diet. That's a, Do yeah. not panic diet. No. Those don't work. I, those are stupid. Or, or you've, I've seen some stupid requests. I need to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Yeah. People. Are you fucking crazy? You know how hard that is? Even for a professional athlete, that's hard to do. Yeah. Like, let's be realistic. That's a pound a day is like you're killing yourself. Good luck. Yeah. Or I feel like people will want to do like an extreme type of diet because they think it's going to get them results faster. Yes. They'll always say, I'm going to do keto for a couple of months just because I want to get this weight off. And then I'm going to hit you up because I want to learn how to then eat I'm balanced. Then I'm going to hit you up. I'm like, Never works. That doesn't you know, work. No. You should learn now about macros and, and learn. It, it goes against relationship what I food. say. If keto is your diet of choice, because it may be your preference, I that's fine. But again, it still goes. It doesn't. It, what I am telling you is the way you lose the weight is the way that you need to sustain the weight. If you switch, it makes sustaining weight loss harder. Yes. Can it be done? Yes. But it makes it harder, and it's already hard enough to sustain weight loss. So why are you going to make it harder on yourself? And what's funny, when people talk about, like, weight loss or this or or that, they talk very confident like they're experts at it. Mm -hmm. And they can't even figure themselves out. But Mm -hmm. then they want to give other people advice. It's hilarious to me. I know. About losing weight. I do You can't even master yourself. You can't even master your own hunger. But here you are spewing. You're going to have this plan or that plan. Have you done it before? No. I'm here to tell you probably going to 90-something percent fail. It's just the, the, yeah. the statistics. The other I'm thing, not making it up. It's just another stats. pet peeve of mine a little bit is if somebody has been on a journey, which is great, and they've lost weight, which yes. is great, and yes. they immediately start teaching any, everyone how they lost their weight and help them do it too, but they haven't maintained it yet. No. That's a different That's animal. That's the proof of whether or not your method was effective is if you can sustain the results from that method long term. That's the hard part. That's when the work begins. Yeah, it really does. Which brings me to my next comment, which is Princess Me 6054 She says, I was wondering what you and Mike plan to do once you reach your goals, especially since you're taking berberine and peptides. Will you keep this up because won't the cravings just return? Or are you thinking your calories will be higher so maintenance will be easier? Asking for myself as well because I'm hesitant to taking berberine or semaglutide because I have a binge eating food addiction issue. I can be good for a while, but every couple weeks I find myself binge eating so I stall my progress. That's really loaded. Loaded. Okay, first I'll dab. Maintenance for us, just like what we just discussed, is actually not very different than what we're doing right now. No. Maintenance just means you your bank account of calories 
shifts upward and maybe the way we distribute those calories will change a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's the only thing that changes about the lifestyle. That's the good thing about our program. Yeah. It doesn't, it's actually just exciting because yeah, you get more food. So to answer your questions on berberine and for us, the peptide that we take is MOTC. It, MOTC is something I'll probably only use when I'm cutting. It's a tool I'll keep in my back pocket when I'm cutting. If I'm not actively trying to be in a calorie deficit, not necessary. Berberine is also something I will gauge because you still need to treat how you're feeling in maintenance. So when you're in maintenance, you like cross that bridge when you get there. You know what I mean? Like, mm. how am I feeling? Am I, oh my gosh, my appetite's out of control. How do I control my appetite? And then I have lots of tools for appetite control besides berberine, but I'll have, I have berberine. I have fiber powder that I add to my, my morning shot. I have just different like little tactics that I do. Apple cider vinegar, depends what my issue is. So if I feel like I need it, berberine is something that you can cycle off and on. So it's, it'll be a tool in my toolbox. That's what I like to call it. Like I just have tools Yes. and I will call upon whichever tools I need exactly. based on where I'm at. Yep. So that will, you know, I'll have to be there to figure that out. Now, that being said, you are correct, answered your own question in that in maintenance, you don't feel as uh, strong of cravings or hunger, all those things because your calorie bank is higher. Yes. That's true. So you're not feeling that deprivation. You're feeling more energy, stronger, um, lots of things. So you don't have as, you're not dealing with as many symptoms that you have to worry about. That's true. So that's our plan for maintenance. Not much different. No. Not just, really. And manage symptoms. Yeah. The MOTS C peptide is something I'll probably keep in my back pocket for when I enter into a cut or maybe I change my goals and be like, you know what? I'm going to go into a little mini cut for the summer or a trip or something. I'm going to start taking MOTC and just deal with it like that. Yeah. yeah. Play around with it. That's the beauty of it. Play um, around with it. For yourself in, if you have a binge eating food addiction issue, you have to be really careful. You got to get that under control. And you have to really, I'm not an addiction food specialist. I'm not an eating disorder specialist. I would seek nope. help with that. But what I can tell you is be very careful to avoid extreme calorie deficits. Yeah. Because if you're in, a, even for me, who I don't have a binge eating disorder per se, but it is a trigger if you put your calories too low to then you get or to, if you're too restrictive with your eating it couldn't it can make cheat days out of control or, yes. a, or a binge day remember we We've binged had those. yeah We've because had those. we were we sick we were on Ooh. some fad diet thing where we couldn't have right. a cheat meal and we had to 100 percent do it for three weeks before we could have a cheat meal guess what happened when the cheat meal day came we binged yeah we went crazy we binge. We, we forced ourselves to go have a dinner because we had our reservations, but we didn't want to eat. It was horrible. It was remember? awful. I actually wanted to throw up. Even the up. ride there was horrible. <laughs> I wanted to puke on the ride. I was, we're just, we went crazy. We went crazy because why? We were too restricted. Yes. So just, in yes. terms of that, if you are experiencing that, take a look at what your triggers are. Are Is it too extreme? Are you trying to do a too deep of a calorie deficit? any kind of like extreme diet where you're omitting entire food groups, things like that. I would definitely, and in terms of if you are going, if you're considering semaglutide for your weight loss, go to a clinic that is specializes in obesity medicine and the psychology so that not, you're not just going there to get your injection. They'll have a program that will help you deal with right? those things as yeah. well. Don't just go get a, go to a clinic that just gives you the shot and they don't give you any resources or guidance. Yeah. I would recommend working with an obesity medicine doctor that can help you that specializes in that. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, we appreciate these comments. I love them. It just yeah. opens up so much great dialogue for the show. Exactly. Everybody and has different questions that they want to yeah, talk about so learn. Yeah, so don't hesitate to no. comment we love the comments even if it's not featured on a show i answer every single comments one of the first things i do every morning is go through the comments and answer them you know why because i appreciate you i appreciate yes, you appreciate because you. you are watching 
our show, you're listening to the show, and then you are taking the time to ask great questions yes. that, that help us and help others. Exactly. And we had that conversation. I had that just the other day. Because we this talking. might answer someone else's question. Because sometimes, <clears throat> I, I'll be honest, sometimes I get a little annoyed because on Instagram more so, yeah. I get people that ask questions because they're asking a question that they want a quick answer because they're busy and in a rush and they don't want to take the time to actually listen or watch the video that I did that gave them the answer to the question. Exactly. Too and bad. So I'm Go a watch little, video. I, I'll just refer a lot of times I'll refer, Hey, I, I covered that in episode 441 yep. or 444 or whatever. Yep. There's your answer. Because Go watch. you guys, I love you guys, but I don't have the time, especially in DMS to answer those kind of questions. And let me explain why I'm answering it for one person. Does that make sense? It's not bandwidth wise. It doesn't make sense. If no. I answer a question, that's only going to benefit one person. That's a lot of time spent on a question that's going to benefit one person. If it's a public comment or we can cover it on the show, yes. it's going to benefit many people and I only have to answer it once and it could benefit it. thousands. People don't understand. You only have so much bandwidth. Yeah. People only have so much bandwidth. And I really do, truly, I can't even tell you. I'm so grateful for people that choose us because there's millions of podcasts, literally, yes. that actually listen to our podcast and then take the time to draft a message. Like, I appreciate that. I, time. time is money. And I appreciate that. Yes, we do. So that's why I take my time and my knowledge and my value that I give to actually give you value in yeah, return. Yeah, we talk about our experiences. If we've gone through it, we share. It's one thing you're going to get from us. If we have the information, we're going to pass it along. All right, so moving on, it's another, this whole episode is com comprised of comments, which is cool. This is another comment. It's actually two comments that I've gotten recently, and that's why I wanted to address it. Um, Gloria Acosta says, hi, guys, I'm curious to know what you think about the carnivore diet. I love li listening to your podcast. Thank you, Gloria. Then I had somebody comment, which this is a hold my coffee, okay? Oh, Same topic, but this is a hold my coffee. They commented on one of my YouTube videos and they said a year ago, I would have said the same thing as you're saying versus calories in, calories out, balanced mm. diet. The old calorie deficit model. Carnivore way of eating blows that out of the water. Most women eating carnivore must up their intake to lose weight. And then she tells me to go see Kellyanne Hogan or Dr. Ken Berry. Okay, so I'm going to give you my opinion on the carnivore diet. Give your opinion. Sure I don't even know. And just so you guys know, we do not talk beforehand. So you had no idea. No. I don't even know what your opinion is on it. You, you're entitled to yours, but you're, you'll have your moment to say what your opinion is. Let me give you guys a summary. So the carnivore diet excludes all foods except meat, eggs, and small amounts of lactose, low lactose dairy products. So cheese, meat, eggs. Testimonials from those who follow the diet claim that it can help treat several issues, but there's actually no really good controlled studies and research to support these claims. Can it help you lose weight? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Why? Because if you are eating, think about this, if you've just now eliminated all of those things except for cheese, eggs, and meat, what have you also eliminated? No processed food. Nope. No sugar and nope. and treats and donuts and Nothing. pastries and can't have none of that. You've just eliminated a lot of the reason why people are fat. That's true. So right yeah, there, of that course. part. It ain't, the, it ain't the meat. Everybody wants to blame the meat. The meat no. is innocent. It's all the other stuff you just named. Yeah, it's the people, so yes. If you suddenly it. take somebody who has a bad diet, they eat processed food all day, snacks, cookies, chips, those yep. things, and that person now just eats meat, cheese, and eggs. Are they going to lose weight? Absolutely. Yes. Are they going to feel better? Yeah. Yeah. They losing are. Weight. You're losing weight. Your body's going to be happy. Of course. Why does it help with weight loss also? Because again, the things that you are eating, allowed to eat, very hard to overeat those things. Very hard. Very hard. I remember I would, I would have a hard time when I was doing the diet Matt had me on. I was eating a lot of steak. red meat, steak. Yeah. And I had a hard time. It's it hard mignon. to get through that amount of protein. Eight, ten, yeah, ounces also, a day. We know about protein. It increases your metabolism it's yes. by 25%. It, is a, it is a thermic effect of food. It's actually part of the TDE calculation. It's called TEF. And Break it so, down for them. They don't know what that is. See, I just said it, thermic effect of food. So what that means is it takes your body more energy to digest it. So yes, that 
all of those things are yes. Can you lose weight on the carnivore diet? Absolutely. So it's mostly because the protein is going to help you feel full. You're, it's gonna, you're not going to be able to overeat it. So you're no. going to have a reduced calorie intake. Yep. Also, if you are someone that was eating really poorly beforehand, lots of processed foods and chips and breads, oils and all kinds of yeah. crap. Seed oil. You probably had a lot of inflammation, a lot of bloating, a lot of issues. That stuff is all going to go away. So you might feel better. Yeah. Um, now. You're also cutting everything out. Whenever you cut a lot of things out or entire food groups, you run the risk of nutri de nutrient deficiencies because now you are, look, where are you getting fiber? Yeah. No fiber. No fiber. Joe does this diet. He loves it, but he modifies it. He does fruits, not berries because he says it's, he's falling flat on his workouts. But what he, he does it to lose weight though. So he'll go on a carnivore for a while to, for weight loss. Probably. And then he goes off Because he's, he's glutton. He said he can eat bowls of right. pasta. He can go crazy too. So he uses it as like a tool. Yeah. Now, but what did we just talk about earlier in this episode? If you're going to do carnivore to lose weight, can you sustain it? That's can you sustain that? So you're going to break the rule. If you're going to lose weight doing the carnivore diet, which do I feel like if you jump on a carnivore diet, you're going to lose weight? Yes. But you are also going to have a hard time sustaining What that. happens when you break? When you give it to the pizza, then the donuts, then the chips, then man, your, the weight will come fast, quick. Honestly, so my honest opinion is, do I feel it can be effective? In a short term way, yes. Yes. Do I feel that weight will be easy? To, weight loss will be easy to maintain? No, because it goes against my philosophy that you have to lose weight in such a way that you can sustain that lifestyle in order to keep the weight off. If I'm being completely honest, it actually reminds me of those old school diets my mom used to do on the back of Women's Day magazine: eat only tuna and potatoes, and right. you'll lose weight. Remember that? Will you lose weight on a tuna and potato diet? Yeah, because it's just tuna and potatoes. Yes. You can't overeat. How much tuna? You're going to be like, ugh, tuna. You're not going to eat. want to eat tuna and potatoes all day. No. She would lose weight. But guess what happens when you want to eat things other than the tuna and potato? You're going to go crazy when you taste real food again. Yes. Big and you time. have a hard time controlling that. I think carnivore is just a cool way of eating tuna and potatoes in the back of Women's Day magazine. It's just a cool new wave thing. Do I feel that there are, for some people, here's the thing. Some people might get bigger benefits from something like the carnivore diet if they are intolerant to something. And they were, they had such a bad diet, they're eating all the things. But it turns out they have a gluten intolerance or a disease like celiac disease. So when they eat gluten, they're inflamed, their yeah. joints hurt, a lot of health issues. But my theory or my thought process on that is, Find out what it is you have to eliminate yeah. and eliminate that to feel better. Don't eliminate everything. Don't put a blanket on. I'm just not going to eat any carbs at all, including fruit. And, but even though you can eat strawberries and you feel totally fine, but you have a gluten intolerance, so you're going to go on the carnivore diet and just omit everything. Why? Why when you don't have to? No, I know. It makes no sense. That's my two cents. On I just don't feel it's sustainable. I feel it's a little faddish. I feel like anything that eliminates an entire food groups, eventually you're going to have some sort of nutrient deficiency. Yep. You might have issues with your cholesterol if you're sensitive to uh, dietary cholesterol. Yeah. You might have issues with sodium. You might be consuming excessive amounts of sodium. Also, what kind of meat are you taking in? Not all meat is good also. That's true. Some people don't digest meat, meat. From? I think that you have to find what works best for you. That's what I was going to say. What works best for you. That's my opinion. That's right. all. I'm How not going to How you elaborate. feel best. What, I'm not saying that, like I said, you can lose weight on carnivore. You can make it work by doing nutrient supplementation. But will you be able to sustain it? If your answer is yes, then it's the right diet for you. If That's you feel it. good on it, you want to eat this way forever and you feel great. I'm not. Who am I to say it's not a good diet? I, I don't feel like that's my place to say. I think that if you find a diet, whatever it is, that you feel your best, you look your best, and you feel like you can do it the long haul, that's a good diet for you. And congratulations, because a lot of people have a hard time finding that. Exactly. And same thing with keto. I had a, 
hard time. I had a hard time with my bowel movements on keto. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have a hard it's time a with fiber. Bowel. Yes. So for me, yeah, it was good taking the way off. But for me, I like balanced eating. I like options to eat other things. Not just one way, just stuck meat and cheese or eggs. No, because I like to eat all mm-hmm. sorts of food. So I found what works for me. Right. It's working for me. Yeah. We and that's why it's like, I other. do have an opinion on it. I don't, mm-hmm. I just don't think it's a great idea. No. That's my opinion. But I also, I don't, on somebody else who, if they sat across this table from me and they said, hey, Janine, but I love the carnivore diet. Yeah. I feel the best I've ever felt. I look the best I've ever looked. And I love this style of eating. This works for me. Then I would be like, that's more power to you. If it if that's if you found something that works for you, exactly. Congratulations! Stick I remember I ran into your old boss. He was the your boss for at Twenty Four Hour Fitness. Yeah, and Jason. Yes, yeah, he I'm had a... gotten the dad bod. Yes, and he would gained a bunch of weight, and he was a fitness guy. And then he lost the weight. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you look so good. What do you do? He's oh, I w- I went vegan. I went vegan, and I never felt better. I personally don't subscribe to a vegan diet. I think like, where are you gonna get your protein? You're gonna have deficiencies. Exactly, but. He looked great Yep. and said he felt great. That's it. So who am I to say, oh, that's not a good diet for you. Where are you getting your protein or whatever? That's bullshit. Like he looks and feels his best. So congratulations to him. He found what works for him. Maybe he had some sort of issues with his, the inner workings of his machine that did not do well with meat. Exactly. That's what people don't realize. We're all built different. Like somebody, somebody said to me today, a friend of mine, he says, wife went on Google. And she said, red, red meat's bad for you. Oh, boy, here we go. Why is it, rat, why is it bad? It causes yeah. heart disease. Well, what these people or these studies or these groups won't tell you is, chances are those people are probably overeating right. on, top of it, on top of the red meat as well. Yeah, That's remember, what they don't, they don't elaborate. Yeah. Okay, so remember this when you're red dealing meat. with, make sure that when you are wanting to cite studies that it's not an article in a blog yes. with a headline. Clickbait. Well, Look for the studies that they will reference in the article. There usually will be like a little hyperlink. And click on that and read the study. Was it a controlled study? What are the parameters of the study? Exactly. Because if somebody was studied that a bunch of people got heart disease after eating steak, was it a controlled study where these people only ate steak? Or were they just like meat and potatoes guys eating the twice-baked potatoes yes you know, loaded potatoes the loaded potatoes yeah the steak with butter yes the dessert yeah. was it a controlled study or is it just yeah these people eat meat every day for dinner and now they have heart disease what else are they doing because a controlled study means that all the variables are controlled if the variables are not controlled the data that comes out can be skewed in whatever way you want to depending on who's supporting the study i could bunk it a little bit with myself because I eat red meat probably two, three times a week, and I have high blood pressure. My blood pressure has been going down. I don't know if red meat causes blood pressure to go up, but they no, say- No, your blood pressure numbers are great, actually, exactly. right now. So, and a lot of times people will say, oh, you can't eat red meat because your blood pressure. I've heard that, too. Yeah, no. And you also have good- You've always, even when you were on keto, even after keto, and, and currently you have good- Your cholesterol is, un, is under 200. You've seen it, yes. You have, your HDL is high. Your LDL is low. You have really good cholesterol numbers. So, so. that debunks that then. Yeah, because you so. are a red meat eater. I am. And you also have very good digestion. You I are. Do. I've never known anybody to have such good digestion. And not to be TMI, I don't get up. but it was it was evident in your colonoscopy. Yes. Because you when you did the clean thing that, that you have to do, you hardly went. Like you didn't have a lot of stuff back happening. Itch, no. Whereas me, I literally had to go back for a second colonoscopy yes. two days later because I still wasn't cleaned out. Yeah. Because I do struggle with digestion. <clears throat> Red meat is harder for me to digest. Yeah. I do have to be very mindful and have a lot of fiber. We're all different. Exactly. We're See? all different. We're all different. It's okay. Don't get your panties in a wad if you're a carnivore person and a vegan tells you they look and feel their best. Okay? Yeah. It's not and your vice place. Versa. It's not your place to yeah. tell them how they should feel. It's not you. It's them. That's a problem with humans and people. They always want to spew their advice or think what's best for right. them. You don't know what's best for and them. The you're not that person. And the only reason I'm even citing my opinion here on the carnivore diet is because I've been asked. So I'm sharing my opinion because I've been asked about it multiple times. And I've thought about doing the carnivore. Yeah. It crossed my mind. Yeah, I think I have. talked to you about yeah, it. Yeah, because Joe did it, so you wanted to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, but it's not Like I said, I do feel like it is, um, 
effective, but for not sure. for some magical reasons. No. It's in the comment and why it's a hold my coffee comment from this person is because they said most women, this statement could not be more ridiculous. Most women eating carnivore must up their intake to lose weight. Cite your source. Yeah, exactly. Most women. So what you're telling me is if I ate 2,000 calories worth of steak, I would lose weight? And you're going, and that would be going past how much past your normal eating? How many calories would you be above? You'd be a surplus of what? Two thousand calories is my maintenance. Okay. So if I ate two thousand calories a day every day of steak, I would lose weight. That's what you're saying. I need to up it to three thousand. Now, might I have to up it a little bit? My my will my maintenance be a little bit higher if I ate only steak? Yes. Why? Back to TEF, thermic effect of food, because two thousand calories worth of steak is like net 1,600 calories or 1,700 calories. I see what you're saying. It's a thermic hard effect to digest it. Digest it. Whereas 2,000 calories of pasta easy. is like 1,980 <laughs> net calories. There, it's very easy to digest. It goes right. It's like so white rice. It goes right there's through. no thermic effect happening really. Just a little amount of energy to digest carbs. That's where the difference is and that might be what they're referring to. But again, is that sustainable? Great. Then I can eat 2,000 calories of steak every day and still lose weight. Wonderful. Can you even afford try that? Try doing that. Yeah, try doing that. Good luck. And try see if you can afford that. Good luck you on your steak bill. You will literally be so disgusted. I have seen competitors who have to eat like 10 ounces of steak for their meal. And they're like, oh, yes. I can't even chew it. It's like coming out of their mouth, yeah. like cotton Ugh. mouth. Can't even chew they're it. They're not enjoying their food. See, no. that, we'll, we'll go back to sustainability. Yeah. Like me, I've lost, I've had some success on macros. I'm still having success and I love it. I'm just, I'm yeah, eating things I love. Yeah, and what did I we love. eat yesterday that we're going to, it's it's on my meal plan this week. So if you guys tune into my full day of eating, I'll show you me making it. Yeah. A quesadilla that was like. Bomb.com. Bomb.com. Yes. Taqueria style quesadilla that had 50 grams of protein. Shout out to your husband. I grilled up the chicken on, the, on our Weber yeah. back there. So good, you guys. That's the beauty. Remember this. When I say that, can you sustain it long term? I don't mean sustain it like, yeah, I can make it happen. Ugh. No, I mean enjoy life. Can you sustain enjoy it? Enjoy life. What's the point of being fit and healthy and all these things if you are miserable? Exactly. There's no point. You should still be enjoying your food. People are scared to go outside to eat eat outside because the menu freaks them out. Like, yeah, dude, you like gotta we know how to make the choice. California choices. Pizza Kitchen. It's on Friday. Friday. That wasn't my surplus. They had a burger and fries, and I made it work. I still lost weight. That's why Saturday I morning. like our program because our program is about yes. It's okay to be enjoy your food, and it's okay for j- food to bring you happiness. I'm not one of those exactly. fitness people that says food should just be fuel. It's not about tasting good. No, fuck that. Like food Arnold is said, about this, happiness Arnold said me. in a, that Olympia back in the days yeah. in that movie. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't eat for taste. I eat for nutrition, fuel the body. Good luck with that. Yeah, most people are not going to. I do it all, and yes. you learn. Let me Both. tell you this. As you evolve in your journey and learn to love the lifestyle, you do start to make better choices. On Look at this water jug. Oh, my God. I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> you do start to make better choices based on how is this going to make me feel. Yeah, bingo. But let that happen naturally. Don't force that. That's going to come. So how I eat is I don't look at my food. Oh, this is fuel for my body nutrition. I'm like, hell no. I'm gonna, I'm, yes, that's a lot of protein. I know this. I already know this, but that's not why, because I enjoy it. I love mm-hmm. it. What I have right now, protein pancakes. You love that meal. Eggs, chicken apple sausage, homemade hash brown from Trader Joe's I air fried. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm yeah. losing weight. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I told you that 10 years ago, there has to be a way. I told you, babe, that we can enjoy our food. We can enjoy life and still lose weight. And I think I was Here anti too. I think I yeah, pushed I, back going, no, you just have to eat this prep food and that's how you, you get to your good body. You have to be strict. You just have to be strict and adhere to that. You just have to have discipline. I remember you'd be like, no, I'm not going to do that. There's got to be a way. I remember be. us having an argument about it. Yeah. This is when I was prepping for yes. my show. And look where we are now. I know. How cool is that? So we got the recipe. We got our program. We know what to do. Sustainability. Yeah. That's all. We teach balance. Because you're not going to be on 100% size. You're not going to go to a party and not have a piece of cake or a slice of pizza. Sorry. You just got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Even us, we're yeah. pretty fucking strict. We're going to we're gonna not slip, but we're going to enjoy because we'll make it work. That's it. It's being aware. Not going crazy, but being aware. Mm-hmm. Okay, I had two slices. Then tomorrow, 
I'm going to pull back on my calories. I'm going to balance it out. It's called a balance. Yeah. And I'll leave you with this little tidbit that I said to you yesterday. And you're like, I like that. I said, uh, I, you I, know, more people need, especially if you're in a deficit. Yes. You're trying to lose weight. Listen up. Learn to live in your hunger a little bit. Yeah. Stop learn, being a weenie. Learn what that feels like. How to, how to conquer your hunger. Yeah. Don't it's let it conquer you. It's just a feeling. So it burns a little bit. You got a little bit of pain. So what? Life is pain. You never got sore from a workout? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ladies, some of you who are mothers, that's way more painful than yeah, hunger. I think you know what I'm that saying? Sometimes people just don't want to feel anything. They they want it to be so easy that they're never hungry. That's not realistic in a deficit. In a deficit, no, no matter how many tools and tricks and berberines no. and things you do, at the end of the day, there's gonna be times when you are hungry. Some days yes, some days no. But just days... learn to embrace the hunger yep. because it just means that you're doing something right. That's it. And you're in charge. You're in control, not the hunger. All right, you guys, thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. See you.